Hello and welcome to Antimatter Skunkworks Edition. I'm speaking to you as a future me, you can tell by the facial hair here, and that's because past me forgot to film an intro. So I just wanted to explain that that is a good thing, really, because I have had a chance to use this uh, disc golf cart for about almost a year now, I want to say, several, several months anyway, and uh, that allows me to give you a unique uh, perspective on how the card has performed and the things I might change. Anyway, so with that in mind, let me show you. Let me just start off by showing you um, sort of how I started building the card. Well, the last three hours have been an <clears throat> exercise in uh, futility. It's been really a horror show. What you see here, with the holes and the globbed on stuff and the filled in and more holes, that's the good stuff. <laughs> Here's the bad stuff right here. This is how it started. It just took me so long to finally sort of see a puddle and be able to control the puddle. And I mean... Practicing would definitely have been a good idea, I guess. Uh, I mean, I did practice, but not on this exact stuff, and you should probably practice on this exact stuff, I guess. But um, So I'm kind of hoping <clears throat> to finish filling in all the holes and do whatever I have to do, and then um, grind it down and hope nobody notices and that it doesn't fall apart. All right, so here's the uh, bottom box, mostly completed. Uh, as you can see, I ground down my welds because um, as bad as that looks, I think it looks better than the globs that I had on before. Uh, I was half expecting the welding process, uh, the grinding process to um, make the thing fall apart, but I guess I got enough penetration. All right, so this is what I'm thinking about, how it'll go. The wheel will go right in there-ish. Can't get my arms not long enough. <laughs> but all right, so get down here. It's like the wheel will go sort of like that, one on each side, of course. And the top part is where the discs go, just like they're they are right there. And then we got a full cubic foot of cargo space underneath for whatever. I could make a. Um, I'm thinking to keep the weight down. What I might do is put. Like maybe stretch a net across here or something. I could maybe put something on the side to strap it onto. Some kind of bungee cord net thing. I don't know. Um, also, I'm thinking, because I'm thinking we're just going to leave this open. And that way, if I wanted to, I could make like a little cooler and it could slide in. Or some other thing could slide in. Uh, there will be um, something in here for the wheels. And then the handle comes inside here and comes out. Uh, I'll try and back out a little bit. Here there's a ledge. So the idea is then the handle, I think it's going to be basically a luggage handle because we have one. It'll come up like this. So there it is. It came out exactly as planned. I think it looks really good. Uh, I've got it leaning on this box here, otherwise it would fall over because there's no feet. There are no feet yet. And it's uh, really great. I mean, it's perfect for discs that go right in there. And it gives us one cubic foot of space underneath to do whatever we want with. We could put a cooler in there or whatever. It rolls really, really well, uh, but there's only one problem. That does not fit in my car. It doesn't fit in any of our cars because I made it too big. At one point, uh, so the problem is to really fit in one of the cars, it needs to be no more than, it's got a 15 inch hole, so it really needs to be something like 14 inches wide, which is as wide as this. And if I move the wheels in that wide, I've got just a, because they're so wide down here, I've got just a tiny sliver of a box that goes in between. Plus, uh, because the wheels are so big, if they come in that narrow, they'll only be eight inches apart or so. I'm afraid the cart will be very tippy. And um, the wheels are just too big. Uh, this is what happens when I try and use junk I've laying around to do stuff with that needs to be more precise, I guess. I don't know what I'm going to do. 
So this just wasn't working for me. It's just too um, wide. It doesn't fit in the trunk of the Corolla or the Solara, and I'm guessing it would have trouble fitting into the seat of the uh, Spider as well. So I bit the bullet, went out and bought these uh, 25 bucks each. So <laughs> it's $77 in aluminum and 50 bucks in wheels. Uh, this cart's already approaching the cost of just buying a cart. So that's kind of the usual way I do things. When I see something and I say, oh, I really want that, but it's 260 bucks. I'm not paying 260 bucks for that. I could easily build that for $400 plus $200 in tools. So apparently I'm too stupid to use a wheel. All right, so I shot some video on this earlier and it was just long and contrived and it didn't come out right. So I'm gonna try and nutshell it here. Hopefully I'll do a better job. To me, there are two kinds of wheels. Uh, the kind where you just uh, stick this on a shaft, put it up through, tighten it down, the wheel's attached, you're good to go. That's what, at least that's what I thought. Maybe there's only one kind of wheel. I think I got that from bicycles, which have a fork here and a fork on the other side, and you can tighten them down to hold the wheel in place, right? This is not one of those wheels. This one requires that you have some kind of a stopper on this side, some kind of a stopper on this side, and they can't be pushed inward. And I guess there's a, I, I guess uh, the way these are used, maybe the shaft sticks out exactly the right amount and there's kind of a cap that when it, when it seats doesn't go any further. And the reason I say that is because what happens is here, uh, yeah you can see it, so here is the inner race, I'm actually turning it, right, and here's the outer race which is fixed to the wheel, right, in between are ball bearings. If you put a shaft through here and tighten with a nut, on this inner race, it'll just push it into the inside of the wheel and it will just destroy the bearing. So it'll just, yeah, it just basically pushes this inner race right out of the bearing and it just, the bearings will fall apart, both sides. And that's what I did and that's the problem I was having. I can show you little clips of video right now of how that was, what was going on there. So what I needed, if I wanted to attach it that way, was either Either I attach it the other way, where I've got some kind of a stopper here and a stopper here, and they're just fixed, and they're just tight enough to keep the wheel from wobbling too much, but no tighter. Or I needed a way to brace between this inner race and this inner race, so that when they push together, there was some support there, and they wouldn't destroy the bearings. That's what I opted for, and that's why I went through all this trouble. I decided later, when I did this one, just to make the shaft longer, and then have two nuts so that one nut tightens the other one in place and I basically created my stoppers to use it like the way you're supposed to. But I didn't have any way to use some kind of a stopper like that except my idea was to use like two nuts. So that was the problem I was having with these wheels. All right, that seems to have solved my problem. I cranked down on this nut pretty good and the wheel still turns. So I <laughs> just solved a problem that should not have had to have been solved. Alright, so here we have some of the pieces that I intend to um, bend and weld up. And you can see I've put them on the belt sander and you get this sort of nice brush finish. I mean it's not perfect but this is going to be painted in the end anyway. Uh, but it gets it better than this. This is what it looks like when originally. This aluminum, unfortunately, the place I buy it from stores it outside. I mean it's in a, it's in like a, a trailer from a tractor trailer so um, or shipping container if you will. And it still it just gets all this on it. It took forever to uh, do it. This is what happens when I did it by hand. It came out pretty good, but I realized I did the wrong side. So I decided to go ahead and put it on there more carefully, and I put a finer grid, and it came out a lot nicer. And again, it's going to be painted. So one will be in, and one will be out. So it kind of goes like this, and then uh, whatever. All right, so uh, my bending process seems to have worked. It's fairly flat on the top. I do have some hammer marks. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because that's going to be um, bolted uh, on the bottom of the uh, cart. And uh, this is just folded under. It's not quite uh, 90 degrees. I was having trouble because I had to push on the finished product, which I don't like doing. Uh, and I know it's all, it doesn't look real clean and everything, but that's okay. There's no actual damage, I don't think. So I think if it's clean, and when I'm painted, and when it's painted, I don't think you'll see anything at all. This is just actually folded under to give me more surface area to weld to on the backside. But also, um, 
uh, so that I don't have a sharp edge off the bottom if I grab it with my hands. And I bought uh, this stuff here that goes on. It's a trim that can go onto the cart. Sorry. Goes onto the cart like that, presses on, and it's, it doesn't look like it's grabbing now, but it really does. I put it it's not all the way down. There we go. It gets on there nice and tight. The, this is a thicker material uh, than this one. It fits pretty well on this one, and it fits uh, perfectly on this one. Okay, so the handle was a problem. Uh, I thought I was going to use um, a luggage handle, uh, but it turned out that handle was broken, and we didn't want to tear apart any of our good luggage to take the handle out. I don't like those handles anyway. They're kind of flimsy, and they don't feel good, and, and they even kind of take up more space than I want. Something that's just a pole works really well, and as it turns out, um, I was going to use one off of a Zuka cart, which is a kind of cart that I'm making here. Well, it's a manufacturer that makes um, actual carts, and I'm kind of designing mine after it. And they actually sell pieces and parts, and the handle was uh, $35, I want to say. And yeah, it's $35, but shipping was like another $26. And as I've mentioned, my cart's starting to get out of control price-wise. So I thought about how I could uh, maybe get some nesting poles, and I was having a hard time with it until I chanced upon this guy in uh, Lowe's Hardware Store. If you're in America, uh, you probably know what Lowe's Hardware Store is. Uh, if you're in Europe, sorry, I can't help you there. But what I can tell you is it is a paint pole. So a professional painter would screw um, a roller on here and then, you know, paint the house with it. And it's got a very simple, um, not real attractive, but simple uh, button you press here. And it just allows you to slide this very easy. Uh, but it locks in pretty securely in these holes, right? And in fact, I think if I wanted it to lock at uh, intermediate positions, I could just simply drill another hole of that size in there and it should work just fine. Then the base is uh, fiberglass and it was $21. So really not a bad solution. All I have to do is secure this inside the cart there and uh, make a handle, which I have plenty of stuff around here to make a handle out of. Um, and I'm good to go. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what it is. I can only tell you that you get it at Lowe's and it's, um, so the part number is um, one six one five zero four five, but it doesn't have any manufacturer name. It just says down here, distributed by LG Sourcing Incorporated, one thousand Lowe's Boulevard. So I'm assuming this is a product that Lowe's is making, uh, having made in China for them, and made in China, uh, and selling, you know, under their name. But it doesn't have a name. It just says a step lock extension pole. So it's a really more of a description than a name, right? Uh, four foot, sorry, uh, 2.4 feet to 4 feet or 0.73 to 1.2 meters if you're in uh, Europe. Of course, if you're in Europe, you're SOL, I think, because unless you can find something like this, uh, they don't have lows over there as far as I know. Anyway, this ought to work really, really well for me. I'm very uh, excited about this, and it was um, $22, so it was less than the shipping on the other part, and I think it's going to be, uh, you know, it looks, it looks finished. It looks uh, not like something you just um, messed up. So I was able to pull the end off just uh, working around a bit and it finally came off. So that's good because now I can make a hole uh, this big in the cart and you can see down inside there is a plastic stopper. I think that keeps, um, I think it keeps the pole from going too far down. Oh, it actually comes out. Check that out. I guess it was hitting on this then. Um, it's okay though. I can uh, put that back on. It's a pretty strong... Uh, rubber, but I wanted to um, slip it in and then put that on inside the cart because I don't want to make a hole that big when I can make a hole that big. Well, it's pretty hot out here. Um, also, I think sometimes when you have long hair, it makes, uh, it makes things hotter, so I'm just going to give myself a quick haircut. Pretty good, huh? Alright, so... Since my last filming, I added this drawer, which is going to come out, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it slides way too easy. I think I'll put some magnets in the back to hold it in, and I might put some magnets in the front to hold it out, because as you can see, it wants to roll, and if it's on any kind of an incline at all, which it probably will be, because usually you tilt it like that so that it doesn't want to fall over. Uh, that's not a big problem. I'm thinking this is going to be 
the face of that drawer. But here's uh, how the card's coming out. I went ahead and welded this entire seam because I knew if I took Bondo and so I'm going to try and take Bondo and uh, make these areas smoother so it looks a little bit better and obviously I'll sand the whole thing, take it apart. Uh, I'm hoping that if I leave a little divot, I, I knew if I didn't fully weld it that the Bondo would crack along the line. So I went ahead and did that and you see there was quite a bit of warpage and I just sort of hit it with a hammer and got it back to close. Uh, and uh, so I'll have to grind this down, I'll have to grind this sharp, these sharp corners here, I'll, gr I'll grind down all this stuff. I'll be grinding all that down, which is, you know, a lot of fun. Anyway, it's uh, getting pretty close to the end here now, finally, then I'll just have to uh, paint it. Alright, so I bonded all the really bad parts, and here it is, pretty much ready for paint. So here it is all primed and now I'm lightly sanding the primer off because it gets this sort of fuzziness uh, when you just leave it uh, and so just a light sanding and then I can go to um, the base coat and I'll show you the base coat so here's the blue that we chose I've only got um, eh, one and a half coats on there right now but uh, it's not good paint I'll show you why this uh, Bare paint is what I'm using, and uh, what I don't like about it is, um, and for the most part, it's just a regular spray paint, and that's fine. But what I don't like about it is that it um, it sputters, and so you'll get a drop or two here and there on your paint when you're trying to make it nice and smooth. So I don't recommend this paint. So there it is, uh, more or less completed. Uh, I forgot to take some shots while I was uh, priming it or anything, but uh, you know there there are a lot of little flaws on it. Um, if you look at the sides, it's all ripply and everything. When I sanded it, it felt smooth, but when I, it's one of those typical things where you paint it and think, oh, it looked better, but it actually looks worse because it shows all the flaws. But I'm not really sure I care um, because, well, you know, some people just staple a handle to some milk crates, right? I mean, this is, I didn't want to spend any more time on it. I spent a whole bunch of time. I could have perfected, if I were going to really make it perfect, I could have spent hundreds of dollars and had these parts laser cut and sent to me and they would have fit perfectly and been perfectly square and I wouldn't have had to sand anything or anything so but you know I was trying to use stuff I had laying around the garage uh, so down in here is a compartment I, I, I like to take extra shirts because I sweat so much uh, in the Florida heat it's got a drawer here and um, it stays uh, so which is really nice I, I use magnets to um, hold it in place when it's out and you can see it slides real easy but in the middle of its travel makes a lot of noise, right? But when at the end of its travel, there are magnets that hold that in place as well, and it doesn't make any noise. They're, it's actually pretty firmly held. You just grab it under here, slide out, put your wallet in there or whatever. And the cool thing is this whole compartment could be reconfigurable. I could pull the drawer out and pull this little lip out, put a cooler in, you know, make my own cooler, whatever. So that's pretty cool. It has these side things on, which they're really, their only purpose is to hold the drawer slides in because uh, the drawer slides screw from the other side and they are um, recessed so there's you can't I couldn't put a, a bolt head through it and yeah I, they're flush it's kind of hard to describe but I, I, I had to screw them into something so I made this and it worked really well it's, it's really tough it's the same ABS plastic and I left these little things in it so you could hook something on there although I have a feeling it would probably drag on the tire <laughs> but it's okay there's the little heart I cut into it and the lid um, came up with a nice solution just holds itself up got a little flaw there I can hit it with some paint and the discs fit in there um, actually all of our discs fit in there uh, this is not all of our discs which is why they're following over but I uh, put a sort of a soft foamy uh, material in there to help with the noise and I have to say it is quite quiet here are our putters they're in a separate compartment and there's still room here for some buck spray so I'm very happy with it and it really rolls quietly which is amazing. And I can roll it across some grass. To be honest I really thought it was going to rattle a lot but it doesn't at all. And um, sorry for the filming there. The feet down here are adjustable in case it wants to fall over. Uh, probably put them all the way up. I just put them down almost so I could paint them and they would get paint all over. Uh, that's it. I mean, that's, I'm pretty happy with it to be honest. It's pretty uh, cool. And the um, handle goes down, stays down.
Oh, and I forgot to show you this. My wife made this. There's a second one for the other side. This one is basically for anything we want to put in there, but probably our um, little mini discs. Uh, and uh, hello, bug, go away. They'll Velcro on, so I'll glue those on the side. So that will cover some of the ugliness on the side that, you know, it's not a good finish. And on the other side, our cell phones uh, will have a similar pouch. They'll go over here. And when they're done, uh, when I'm done using them, we can just rip them off and stick them in the top. There's plenty of room. So, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the build. Now that that is all done, I will show you, after a few months worth of use, what I do and don't like about the cart and how it's been uh, working for me. So, what I don't like about the cart are only two things. One, as I mentioned, it's too big to fit in all of our cars, so it needs to be a little bit smaller. But honestly, this compartment holds almost every single disc we own. We just have a few more, maybe, maybe just a little bit more than this. And of course, we lose them regularly, so that'll shrink. Um, uh, the other thing I don't like about the cart is that it's a little bit rough around the edges. You know, all the stuff that I got wrong. You saw how I welded it, and the welds were poor and stuff like that, so the lines aren't straight. Um, that's really all. Uh, so when I build the next one, I intend to have all the pieces cut for me so that they're all straight. And so the welds will probably still be pretty bad, but at least um, any edges that I'm not touching will be relatively finished, I hope. Other than that, I love it. The things I really love about the cart are uh, this height. I like having the discs on the top and, and access from the top instead of this side or down there because I don't have to bend over at all. They're just right here. It's super, super simple, and I like having this separate space for our putters. Um, sometimes I almost kind of wish I had one for the disc I'm currently using. And sometimes uh, because I've got extra space, sometimes I do that or just carry it in my hand. And when I get to the next hole, I'm like, okay, this is the one I'm using because I I don't really use <laughs> hardly any of these discs. This could be way smaller. Uh, but it's nice to have backups in case you lose some or just occasionally I just want to try one out or something. So why not leave them all in there? So anyway, I really like the location of the box. These hinges, they're working great. As you can see, it holds it up. They're, they seems a little floppy, but it really makes no difference whatsoever. I'd say the only thing that's really not holding up well is this, this stuff I got. You can see it works really well here. It's working really well here. But down here, the cart lays on its side in the car, and it's kind of sort of pulled this off, and then it gets it's all bent out of shape. And uh, well, I can bend it back with my thumb fingers a little bit here. That's kind of nice. This actually come, came off, and then, well, here I can show you when it does, if it's like that then the top doesn't completely shut. And it does this in the car and the trunk sometimes, and then the discs can come out and you gotta put them back in. So the next design I intend to put a lock uh, on the top. So when it's in transport, um, it will not open up like that. Everything else is holding up pretty well. The wheels were really problematic. That's probably the worst part of the old cart. I thought it was gonna be the handle, but it turned out to be the wheels. So um, I had the cart designed, I mean, I had the cart that uh, just as it is now that I was using. And um, when I was playing one day, this happened. And I know how that happened. What happened was the spokes on the one wheel that I messed with. So one wheel is fine. It's basically as stock. The other wheel is the one I messed with a lot. I told you about earlier in the video. I think, and uh, what happened was some of the spokes were loose. Actually, many of the spokes were loose. I think some came loose later and what happened was that meant that all the weight and stress on the wheel was handled only by uh, three or four spokes really and it couldn't handle it and then it came apart like that so I took them off they were such a pain I said forget that I'm taking it off I'll get a new one I got these they were about 20 bucks each actually less expensive than that I had trouble finding ones these again I don't know where they are um, but uh, I found these. They are a little bit less expensive, but they're bigger. You can see they're the height, the diameter is the same, but the width is bigger, and it's bigger uh, not only the tire width but the width of the hub. And this is the same kind that one was before I changed it out, meaning that it needed some positive stop that you didn't tight because tighten because if you tighten it, it'll destroy the bearings. So it needed to just sort of lock, and then in such a way that the wheel didn't have a lot of wiggle room, right? What that did was effectively 
increase the length, the width of the cart by one nut here and another nut on the other side. And that was just enough to make it very difficult to get in and out of my wife's car. So I was going to try and shave off as much as I could. You can see a little bit extra sticks out here. I thought if I shave that flash or even below a little bit, sorry, flush or a little below a little bit, a little bit that might help solve the problem because it was just a tiny bit. But in the end, I didn't want to waste this wheel, so I kind of took it apart, pulled all this rubber off, pulled, removed all of the spokes that were loose, put new ones in, welded it. You can see my crappy welds again. Sandblasted it, painted it, put the wheel tire back on. You can see it's already dirty again. Didn't look, <laughs> look like I did anything, but it seems to be holding up now that all the spokes are contributing. It does roll a little wonky because I had difficulty getting the spokes exactly straight. You know, I used calipers and measure from here and here and here and all around, but somehow it still came out a little bit crooked. And you can see on the other side of the cart, it was the wheel was on this side at one point. Uh, when that happened, you can see how it sort of took out the paint and everything behind there. But since my repair, they seem to be holding up just fine. They're a little bit crooked and all, but you don't notice it when you roll it. It rolls super smooth. Nobody notices it when you look at it. I mean, it looks fine, right? And I really like these wheels better for this cart. So I'll use those on the next cart. Uh, the drawer is great. It uh, stays closed with the magnets. It stays open with the magnets. It's really quite just perfect. And uh, really just, uh, yeah, very happy with that. Didn't need a handle. I could put one like here. That's really what just holds the front on to the back. But uh, I could put one there if I wanted to, but I don't see any need to because there's a little lip under here that opens just fine. And we can keep our wallet and keys, sunglasses, you know, pine bars, stuff like that in there. This pocket's working out really well as well. Uh, this little lip is enough, and this hole, I guess, is small enough that this stuff doesn't really come out. It does sometimes in the trunk when the car, cart is on its side, but on the um, course, it never does. And these little holes turn out to be helpful, although in this case, just a tiny bit off. <laughs> but my wife uses this. I, I don't use that. And it gets powder all over the side. So. so the handle turned out to work pretty well, honestly. It's uh, tight enough down in here that it uh, doesn't twist or anything. Um, the only problem I'm having with it is, you can see right here, there is a little pin. It's a brass pin. And that's what fits into these holes. And it works as a stopper. And I think it's getting a little worn, so sometimes when I pull on it, especially if I'm going up a hill, it'll slip and the handle will extend until it hits the next hole, the next hole, and a lot of times all the way till the end, which is fine. It doesn't ever come apart because it's got a stopper in it and everything. So uh, it's not that big of a deal. It still works pretty well for now. If it doesn't continue working well, I may have to modify something there or get even a new handle. It works well enough where I've decided on the next design to use this handle again. And I found one at the store, and it feels more secure than this one does. I think right out of the box, it's a little bit better. So, uh, yeah, not, it's not a huge deal, really, and I'm fine with that. The uh, cup holders are working great. Uh, you can see they're, they're getting a little loose, so I may need to tighten that screw there. Uh, and it, it gets real tight. on. It's getting, It seems to get almost tighter on the thermos. So you can see it's taking all the paint off there, right? But again, that's fine, and I have to point out that these are on draft quality. It's like the lowest, fastest quality you can do, because it was just going to be a, a test to see if it even work. But they work so well, even on draft quality, they're strong enough. I mean, as long as you don't, like, try and pull this in this direction or this direction, it's fine. you got to kind of twist them out, because otherwise I think it'll split along the, the layer lines. And the pockets are working great. I think if I were to make these, have my wife make these again, they would be just maybe a little bit looser because uh, sometimes with the lid sticking out, I'll go to put my phone in and I'll miss and it'll drop to the ground. <laughs> it's pretty easy to tell because I use it so often with recording my score. Also, on this side, uh, the inferior quality. Um, Velcro, and so it doesn't hold as well as the other, but the only thing we really put in there are these anyway, and they're really light, so yeah, it's not perfect, but all in all, I absolutely positively love this cart. It's it's showing some age here, you know, this hits up there, sorry, this hits up here, and it's taking the paint off, and just normal wear and tear on the paint from just using it, but I gotta tell you, it just, I think it looks great. It's so, so useful. So, 
So useful, in fact, that uh, the next one I intend to design is going to have a very, very similar shape. It's just going to be a little bit smaller in its dimensions, uh, slightly different layout, but basically same thing. Discs on top, storage underneath, drawer in the middle, same handle. These wheels are a little bit more solid. I'll put them on the normal way instead of messing with them like I did with that one. Uh, yeah, it'll have a much different look than this one as far as theme goes. But uh, really looking forward to building the next one so that it fits in all of our cars nicely. Okay, because this video isn't long enough, I just wanted to give you some specs on it really quick. Uh, the wheels are 12 inches in diameter. And uh, that's taken directly off of the Zuka cart that I told you I kind of modeled this on. They were 12 inches, so I made mine 12 inches. I think you could go with 10 inches and still be fine. Obviously, the bigger the diameter, the easier it will roll. Uh, I think the 12 is just right, really. Uh, the aluminum that I made it out of, most of it is 063, so um, a sixteenth of an inch, and uh, or 16 gauge. Uh, the top, though, the whole top is made out of aluminum that I had in my garage already, and it was thicker than that. So that increased the weight a little bit over the 063. It also increased a little bit because, as I mentioned before, I made it a little bit too big. So this box is uh, 14 inches this way, but the overall cart is about 16 inches with the wheels. And it's in, interestingly enough, it's only about a half inch um, smaller in this direction due to the wheel sticking out back here. So it's just the tiniest bit smaller this way than it is that way. Uh, because I made it too big and because I have some slightly thicker metal on the top, the weight of the cart's a little higher than I expected. It's 25 pounds, uh, which is almost exactly the weight of the baby carriage that my buddy uses as a disc golf cart. So no real advantage there. Although my next one uh, will be a little bit lighter. Uh, I think that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.